In an electrical storm, a lightning storm, charge builds up in the clouds. The clouds rub together and that friction means that electrons move from one cloud to the other. The charge builds up in the clouds and then there's a difference between the charged clouds and the uncharged earth. That charge finds a path through the air and that is what you see in the lightning conduit that you see in this picture. The basic understanding of electrostatics is that like charges repel. So when I turn on the Van de Graaff generator, all the pieces of aluminium have got the same charge and therefore repel one another. The Van de Graaff generator is made up of this vinyl belt, which is motorised, so it turns. As it turns, it brushes past this conductor down here, this piece of metal. And that means that it becomes charged. That charge is deposited onto this conductor at the top of the vinyl belt, which has actually already become slightly charged. To collect that charge, we put this metal dome on top of this conductor just here. And that gives literally more space, more room to collect those, that charge. And I also use this cylinder here, which we can plug into the Van de Graaff generator, which is it has now a connection down through to Earth. And I can plug this sphere into this connector here, which is a connection from the bottom of the sphere all the way through this wire, down through the Van de Graaff generator, through the mains wire, down into the earth socket on the plug and the earth conductor which is literally buried underneath the building. I'm not going to get a shock as long as I'm holding this sphere and it's connected to the earth. The charge from the dome would much rather go down through this sphere, through the conductor, through the wire, all the way down to earth than through me. It's a path of almost no resistance at all and charge always takes the path of least, least resistance. So I can turn on the band of that generator and we're going to start to get that build up of charge on the dome. And we call that charge an electrical potential. When I move the conducting sphere towards the dome, you can see that potential energy turns into actual current electrical energy. And you hear that sound, that spark, and you can actually see that spark as well. This is a really good way to demonstrate the idea of potential difference. All that charge on that dome doesn't want to be there. It doesn't want to be together. They're all the same charges. They repel one another. So whenever there's a possibility, they like to escape one another. Now, there is a high potential there on that dome, and there's a low potential here on this dome. So there is what we call a potential difference. So you really need to be thinking of voltage not as uh, just a push in a circuit, making the electrons flow around the circuit, but think about there being a difference between a potential on one side of the battery and a potential on the other. And that potential difference causes the charge to flow, to move. So we have a potential and we have no potential. We have a potential difference. Also, you can see just the basics. This electricity is not moving, it's static. This electricity in that spark is current. Static electricity and current electricity. Now if I touch the sphere to the dome, there's going to be no charge and I can turn off the Van de Graaff generator. The absolute ba basics you probably explored in the lab by using an insulating rod, an acetate or polythene rod and you will have rubbed a cloth onto it and if it became negatively charged you will have learnt that electrons are added to the rod by the cloth. So extra electrons, and there are absolutely loads and loads and loads of these, uh, extra electrons are added to the rod and it becomes negatively charged. If it becomes positively charged then you have to still think about the electrons moving and those electrons actually come off the rod onto the cloth and that leaves behind what we call holes or we call them ions, the positively charged parts of atoms where electrons once were making the atom neutral. 
and therefore the rod itself has a positive charge. So just remember the bit that moves is the electron. Okay. Now you also just need to know, remember that opposites attract. So if we have a positive and a negative, then they're going to feel an attractive force towards one another. And like charges repel. So positive and positive will feel a repelling force from one another. Negative and negative will feel a repelling force as well. Now, if you thought this video was any good, then you might like to subscribe. You might also like to tell your friends about my videos if they're studying physics. So the last little bit to tell you that sometimes static electricity can be a little bit of a nuisance. For instance, have you ever had your clothing cling to you or you've ever had a small shock? Have you ever noticed that certain things get dustier than others because they actually are insulators and they get charged, therefore dust clings to them? But static can be dangerous at times as well. Places where we've got flammable gases or lots of oxygen, that spark can actually ignite them. And also where large quantities of charge can actually go through the body and cause a lot of damage. You can avoid some of this by earthing something. Now, some appliances are earthed, as I showed you the Van de Graaff generator was earthed. But also, you could just use an insulating mat, so not allow the charge to actually get to the object in the first place. Or, if you wear shoes that are insulated, you're not very likely to get a shock. Now, in situations where you're dealing with fuels, then you can often make a bridge, make an earth bridge from one thing to the other. For instance, an airline tanker, mid-airy fueling will be linked to each other and that will cause the any charge to go through that rather than cause an igniting spark. Thanks a lot for listening.